In iOS 6, we have built an entire new mapping solution from the ground up, and it is beautiful. This is what Lake Tahoe looks like. We're doing all the cartography ourselves. Here's New York City, San Francisco. This is a worldwide effort. We're covering the world. Here's Italy, New Zealand, Singapore, Norway, Paris. I'm going to go through every city. In the <laughs> So beautiful, beautiful maps. Now part of maps is local search. You have to be able to find businesses and points of interest. And so we've already ingested more than 100 million business listings around the world to make a great local search. Once you find a business, bring up the info card and it's beautiful. We've integrated with Yelp so you get reviews and ratings and lots of photos right in the card. We're also building a traffic service. We have this great traffic view, so it's easy to see where the incidents are or where the, the slow traffic is. And on top of that, we overlay the incidents. So it's easier for you to figure out whether traffic's likely to speed up in a given location anytime soon. In addition to other data sources, we're using anonymous, real-time crowdsourced data right from our iOS users to keep this traffic fresh and up to date. All right, so here's our maps. They're all vector-based, so everything is really fast. You zoom in and out. You can rotate, and we rotate all the labels. When you zoom in far enough, you'll see buildings start to appear. You can tap on a point of interest. Here's MoMA. Get the info card. Again, beautiful. Get reviews and ratings from Yelp. Lots of photos. We also do 3D. So I can zoom in and see just what MoMA looks like. Can zoom out a little bit here. Sort of move around the city. Rotate around. Let me zoom back in there. Beautiful. I'll go back to 2D. We have satellite view, of course. Here's our satellite view. But what I really want to show you is flyover. So let's go ahead and choose the Transamerica Pyramid. Now this is not a movie. This is being rendered in real time. So I can go ahead and rotate this myself. I can change the camera angle, fly through it myself. Just beautiful. Let me choose another place. How about the Sydney Opera House? And again, I can rotate this. Let's turn it so I can look back at the city. Right behind the Opera House, I'll zoom out a little bit, change the camera angle. And that is flyover. Now the last thing I'd like to show you is turn-by-turn -turn directions. So we'll switch to the other device. We can't all go in a, get in a car and drive around, so we have a simulator of our turn-by-turn -turn directions here. I'll go ahead and choose Coit Tower. I'll tap on the Quick Route button. It gives me three different options. I'll choose Route 2. Let's go ahead and start. Starting route to Coit Tower. In 750 feet, turn right onto Greenwich Street. Turn right onto Greenwich Street. Then turn left onto Grant Avenue. Now you can watch this adaptive cinematic camera angle as we go through corners. In 400 feet, turn left onto Grant Avenue. When two turns are close together, we put both signs up for you. In 300 feet, turn right onto Lombard Street. You see we have the, the footprint of all these buildings correct. 
in a quarter mile. Arrive at your destination. Now, at any point, I can get the ETA up top. It says one minute. Simulator's going a lot faster than you should drive in San Francisco. We'll get there faster. <laughs> I can also just tap on overview, which allows me to zoom out. I can see any part of the route at any time. Zoom in over here, just sort of pan around. Or at any point, just tap to resume. You see it coming around Telegraph Hill here. Arrived at Coit Tower. And that is turn-by-turn -turn directions.